Don't be shy, cause I, the life won't bring you down too far. What's good, it's Rifle TV in association with MTK Global. I'm in the MTK fight bubble here in Rotherham with Mr. Rotherham. Lee Eaton. How are we, Lee? Very good, mate. How are you? All right, I have to apologise actually earlier for stitching you up with the. Oh, I say earlier, last night. I woke up to a message that you was calling me a melt because I put your uh, COVID yeah, test on the channel. Put that on, uh, I didn't know you were going to put it on IFL. <laughs> I see you filming, but Jesus, it ain't nice. It wasn't nice. It was. Um, Fishing around down there, <laughs> it wasn't very nice, I'll tell you that, but it is what it is, isn't it? Um, the second instalment of sort of the MTK return, yeah. first one was a good show, obviously, top of the bill, we had, uh, I say a shot, Maxi, you know Maxi's a good yeah, fighter. And, it was a shock. But yeah, a shock against shock. John O'Carroll, and then we roll on to this week, um, pleased with number one, and now into number two. Yeah, no, last, uh, the last show was very good, uh, obviously it was a shock, for Maxi winning, a, a few people obviously said, oh yeah, I knew Maxi would win, but listen, Nobody knew how that fight was going to plan. Um, John O has come out and said he wasn't the best John O he, he could have been. So obviously he's going to have to reset. Um, fair play to Maxi. Maxi um, is going to be with MTK for the next couple of fights. So some good fights out there for him. So obviously we're looking at options and that for him. Um, there was <laughs> I see a little glint over there from um, GC. <laughs> his, little, his eyebrows went then but uh, yeah no so obviously there was some good fights on the card um, second instalment we've got Lewis Crocker versus Louis Green which is going to be an absolute barnstormer looking forward to that we've got the diva Gary Cully on the bill Lee McGregor uh, Liam Taylor versus Daz Tetley which is a cracking fight um, debut for Fergus Quinn against a 6-3 and three kid um, which is a very very tough debut but he's confident his team's confident so and obviously, uh, James McGiffin making his debut. Yeah, belting lineup, and uh, it's one of them where you look at a few of the fights and you think that could be a show stealer, that could be a show stealer. Yeah. But um, yeah, good lineup of fights. Yeah, hundred percent. Obviously, Lee McGregor always brings good, great action. He's um, bang up for it, Ryan. Oh, he's bang up yeah. for it. And obviously, Ryan Ryan Walker was giving Sonny um, Edwards some shit on thing on in, uh, Twitter. Uh, Lee McGregor went, "I'll fight you." And um, he went, all right, sweet. So that was quite an easy phone call to make um, when we made the fight. Um, yeah, they both bang up for it. Uh, also, Gary Cully versus Craig Woodruff. Woodruff's team's been texting me um, things every night this week um, about they're gonna. He can't. Gary can't out jab him. Gary can't out fight him. And if he makes the final bell, we'll probably only get a dodgy decision. So, Gary, what have you got to say about that? <laughs> But uh, no, that's going to be a great fight. Both very, very tall, gangly, um, lightweights. But it's weighed at one forty, but they're both lightweights, so it's going to be um, it's going to be a good fight. Obviously, Liam Taylor uh, versus Daz Tetley is a great fight for the British and Commonwealth Eliminator at welterweight. Fergus Quinn. It's, it's just a blinding card, really, um, for obviously behind closed doors. MGK continuing to uh, to deliver the goods. I want to talk to you about something that happened yesterday. I went up to the room uh, to do the isolation, go on to Twitter. You thought I was going to say something weird then, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on to Twitter and I see uh, OD and Mark who bang at it. Um, spoke to OD <laughs> last night and obviously I'm sitting here, I've got Pete Taylor behind me. OD's lined up to fight Tyro oh, McKenna, McKenna in yeah. the biggest fight of his career. We had it with a foul thing, that didn't materialise into a fight. Him and Sam Jones are intent that this is going to materialise into a fight at some point, but... Uh, yeah, that went off. That went off a bit. Yeah, I spoke to um, OD's trainer last night, Kevin Mitchell, who told me the story because I've heard two stories. I've heard it from Marco's side and I've heard it from OD's side, obviously. So it's who you want to believe. But listen, it's all nonsense, to be honest. Ahara Davis did the biggest fight of his career against Tyrone McKenna on the golden contract. And Florian Marco, he's a 6-0 and pro. Obviously, he's got a massive fan base, but a fan base doesn't get you the big fight, so it, it will do in the end, but OD's just got to concentrate on Tyrone McKenna, um, and if, if, he, if he wins the golden contract, is, is him versus Florian Marco going to be made? I doubt it, because OD's going to get a six-fight 
contract or five fight contract with one of the best promoters in world boxing, why is he going to fight a six or seven zero fighter in his next fight? Don't make no sense for career wise for OD. And um, I spoke to Sam Jones yesterday, and they're bang up for it. But of course they're going to because they want a, a big fight like that. But listen, Florian Marco is a good fighter, very good fighter. But obviously he's got a fight coming up. Let him concentrate on that. Let Hara concentrate on Tyrone McKenna, and then whatever happens next year it happens next year. Yeah, and I heard Tori, uh, Tori, Florian has a pretty tough fight as well, so we'll, we'll see how that all plays out. Um, I'm sure they're going to keep keep going back and forth, and I know I'm probably going to speak to Florian at some point tonight. But yeah, um, last time I spoke to you at PWR, we spoke about the Billy Joe Canelo situation. Um, Canelo, Avni Yildirim was ordered 36 to one by the it's WBC. Um, yeah, I didn't expect your reaction to be too positive. Uh, yeah, talk to me. Absolutely shocking. If that fight happens, it's diabolical. If that happened over here by any of the promoters over here, they'd get absolutely ripped of absolute shreds. Obviously, even Golden Boy and that will as well. But the thing is, Canelo requested that fight. It wasn't the WBC ordered it. Canelo requested it because he wants the WBC. Because he, he's only fought for, he fought for um, he wrote fought Rocky Fielding for the WBA regular. Obviously, some people say that it's not a real title. It, listen, it is a real world title, one hundred percent. Um, but obviously he wants a WBC at that weight, uh, so that's why he's requested it. Um, it's a dog shit fight, simple as that, it's dog shit. He hasn't won a fight in three years. Yildirim is obviously got sparked out by Eubank. Um, he got beat by Andrew, uh, Anthony Durrell. And who has he beat to deserve a WBC? How have they kept him as the top ranked contender? It's diabolical. Yeah, well, it's nonsense to be honest. Him versus Canelo is an absolute shite fight. Simple as that. Um, sorry for my French, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, crap. Yeah, and obviously it's not my place to put my five pence in, but the WBC then got told by the Zone, who what, a five-year-old streaming platform, that they wouldn't accept the fight as well. So I know it's like being pushed and pulled. It's just a bit strange. Listen, I, I know why the WBC have done it. Listen, it ain't rocket science. Fair play to them. It's a business at the end of the day. It's all yeah, about their money. It's all about them pennies, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So fair play to the WBC, but yes, yeah, crap fight. Simple as that. <laughs> Talking to the WBC, um, Dillian lost his yeah. immediate mandatory position. Um, I felt like watching it. Like it was just the sort of shock where I was like, I was like, a goosebumps. I couldn't believe. It. I can imagine pretty similar for yourself. You no, know what? I didn't even. All, I didn't even watch the, the show. I didn't watch that. No, no. Don't don't really watch much boxing at the minute. It's I only watch our own shows. And obviously, um, any fighters. Obviously, I'm looking to match and stuff like that. So, but I didn't watch the show. Um, but obviously, it's a massive shock. I woke up in the morning and find out that um, Dillian had been. Um, Obviously, that uppercut, but unbelievable shot from Povetkin. Um, Povetkin, listen, he's an Olympic gold medalist. He, he's only ever lost to two of the best well, heavyweights of our generation. So, to people to say it's a massive shock, it ain't really. But obviously, um, gutted for Dillian. Uh, obviously, one, always root for your own, obviously, countrymen and that. But um, listen, he'll be back. He'll be back, and I'm um, sure he'll be back in big fights. He brings that um, who's for the uh, he brings that brings the crowds in. Do you know what I mean? He's a he's a big draw. He'll always be in big fights, so hopefully he gets straight back on the horse and comes back. Yeah, and the WBC have said that Vetkin isn't now immediate mandatory, um, even after his uh, win over Dillian. But I suppose you can root against Dillian if if you really want to. But Dillian Fury is just so much more appealing than Fury Povetkin simply because Dillian's been grinding and grinding trying to grind him down for years and years and Povetkin don't speak a word of English so yeah. do we need Dillian in a way to no disrespect to Povetkin but do we need Dillian to take the rematch and knock Povetkin up? Well it's, listen it's, it's blinding for MTK and Tyson Fury that he hasn't got no mandatory at the minute because um, it opens up it frees up the Anthony Joshua fight that's what everybody wants to see nobody wants to see Povetkin no one wants to see Fury versus uh, White. Obviously, I would like to see that. I'd love to see that fight. But the fight I want to see, and the fight all the fans want to see, is Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. Maybe the boxing gods are lining up for once. You never know. Well, this year's this year's been a bit crazy, so anything can happen. <laughs> Let's talk about Kazakhstan. 
couldn't go by him, mate. He is a serious... They've got some bad fucks coming out of there, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, the, the light middle, I can't even collect, mate. Yeah, yeah he's unbelievable. Um, the Cruiserweight, he fought a 20-1 and one on his debut with 15 KOs. He fought him on his debut. He'd had five or six, probably six, about six or seven ten-rounders, and he went in, fought him on his debut, and stopped him in two rounds. That's a serious, serious talent. So look, look out for him. Just look out for him. He's going to be in some fun fights. Uh, I know Jamie was um, Jamie Collin was waxing lyrical about him. Do, obviously, he's only one and zero, and um, but do you know if MTK have plans to bring those guys over at some point? You know when they get to your five, six and zeros because they're obviously going to be moved quickly. You don't fight someone like that if you ain't. But do you know if they ever have plans to bring those guys over when obviously when things return to normal? Yeah, listen. Obviously, the MTK Kazakhstan is being run by Aska. Um, Aska's doing a brilliant job in getting some of the best talent in world boxing signed up to MTK. Um, they will always, them fighters will be over. Obviously, Sultan Zerbek has been over, Nurtaz Ashpinov, um, Zankosh Turov has been over here. So, yeah, 100% of them fighters will end up on our shows. Obviously, we're a team MTK, so they'll be over. Um, don't know when, don't know if they definitely will, but I'm pretty sure they will. Um, but they're going to be in some big fights because they're, just, they're fighting serious contenders already. All right, Lee, thanks for giving me about 15 minutes of your time and uh, look forward to tomorrow night. That's all right, I'll put the invoice in the post. Oh my God.